Now you probably clicked on this video and you are saying, Diana, BS, nobody's getting that long on the ZVE1. You must be hacking it. You got a fan on the back of it or something. And you'd be wrong, my good sir and or madam or whomever. <laughs> but it's true. Eight hours, 4K, 10 bit, 24P, 30P, whatever floats your boat. For those of you that wanna know just what the settings are, we'll pop those on the screen. You're welcome. Hit the thumbs up button. See you in the next video. For everybody else that wants, the secret sauce, how I'm doing this repeatedly over the day and some things you may want to consider changing. If you do notice that you are running into issues more regularly, this will probably even work on either even some of the other Sony cameras that have recently come out. But you know, I don't like to belabor the point, so let's get into it. Like you, a content creating entrepreneur, I need my camera to work for me and that needs to be during live calls, during live event workshops, online. If I'm recording my talk, you're working with a brand and you're having a meeting with them or you're doing your regular videos and your podcasts, whatever and however long that is because if somebody that's your favorite creator that you look up to or favorite business owner or whomever says they'll give you an hour or two of their undivided attention, ask whatever questions you want and you can record it and you got the ZVE1, you like, let's go, I want, I want it. I want the best of the best. So that was my thought process in how long this camera runs. So what this eight hours consists of is from the top of the day to the end of the day, whether I'm taking calls to my last piece of content that I'm recording for the day, the camera is on and in my basic live streaming setup. So if you already are used to live streaming, then whatever setup you're used to using is fine. If you're USB streaming, I would suggest getting the stuff I'm about to recommend for the gear because that's what I found to work best. Can you use USB-C streaming? Yes, but just honestly, from the sheer amount of time that it takes to consistently run these tests, see how long it take and go through all of the myriad of different options inside this camera that would take too long so unless you're going to do 30 45 minutes or less via usb c then at that point i would recommend just using a traditional streaming setup especially if this is what you regularly do so let's get into the gear Right off the rip, ignorable power options or power source is my number one thing for making this work because no, no, ain't nobody got time for <laughs> trying to figure out how much longer I will have from one battery to the next or this one didn't quite start off at 100%. That's crazy. No, ignorable power source. My go-to tool of choice for this is the small rig FZ100 AC power adapter because it's from a reliable brand that I can trust and they have customer service and they back up what they're saying with their stuff. Whether it's a random brand online on Amazon, I would highly recommend not trying a bunch of stuff even if it has a bunch of reviews or people saying they've been using it for X amount of time. That's fine. That means nothing to me because if you have an issue, it burns out your camera or shorts it, which absolutely happens more regularly than you think and I have experienced that and it's just not fun when you pay that repair bill and send it off because they're not refunding you for any of that stuff and there's no real customer service at least with small rig there is that stuff is just not worth the investment of like saving 20 bucks or something to just get the right thing instead of the wrong thing. Plus the FZ100 cable is longer than most others. And so it's really, really good, small, lightweight. It's all the bells and whistles and it works for this setup. Now I have tried USB-C and I would recommend getting something that's dual purpose. I like the Condor Blue right angled USB-C adapter. It is a USB-C to USB-A and it is very long. And because it is data capable, you can not only use this to power the camera, and I would recommend a power brick instead of a battery bank would only get you so far. So at least start with 10,000 milliamp hours if that's what you're gonna start with. If you use a power brick though, and you at least start at 100%, the camera will stay at 100%. So once you take your camera down and let's say you're getting ready to travel, hit the road, whatever, you'll have a full battery to continue the day with and it won't continue to drain progressively throughout the day. So power options, it just needs to be ignorable. We don't wanna think about it. Let's move on to the next section because these are the settings and how they work. Now, when it comes to all of the multiple combination of options, when it comes to settings, frame rates, bit rates, and all the rest in the in-between, I would recommend like a good, better, best type of settings. And let's go and break down what those are. So let's go from best and work our way down, but it's kind of reversible if you think about it. Now, what I've been doing these tests with is the HS4K, and that is the H.265 codec. And some of you may be saying for live streaming, Diana, why would you do that? And especially if you're doing 10 bit, where are you streaming this content to? To that, I would say, mind your business, okay? Because the camera can do it, why not let it fly? If it can do it, we're paying for this stuff. 
This is the stuff that we want access to, especially if you're recording a talk or a workshop yourself, you're getting your footage back. I don't care if everybody else's stuff looks like Babbage. I want that to fit seamlessly in the rest of my content. So if you can do it, we're doing it. So HS 4K 420 10-bit and 24P. I do stream at 24P because I use Ecamm Live that allows for me to record and stream in 24P instead of 30P like everything else. Now, if I'm doing a live workshop, I would switch that over to 30P, but you can't do this in the HS 4K. That brings us to the next session and it's not necessarily bad, it's just gonna be different and that's the XAVC-S, the standard 4K in any Sony camera. And you can do this in 10-bit or 8-bit, but I would recommend if you're gonna go this route, especially if you potentially are running into overheating, in this HS setting, then once you go to XAVC S 4K, just the base standard Sony 4K, which is still good and very high quality, go ahead and drop that to 100 megabits per second and then do 8 bit. Now, in this setting, which is what I would recommend in the ideal setting, is because you can actually switch between 24p and 30p. And so, if you don't want to do the jumping back and forth, this is just a good baseline setting, even just for your regular video. So, this works well. And next would be the XAVC S HD, which is streaming then at that point in 1080p, which is still a high quality file. And I'll talk about that, put a little asterisk next to that. And here as well, you can do 10-bit or 8-bit. So whatever floats your boat or finds your lost remote. But if already in your cameras, you're noticing that you're running into that overheating threshold faster or sooner than you would hope to, then I would recommend trying some of the lower settings that I talked about, whether that be an HD or if you just use the standard XAVC-S. Because like I said, it's not the H.265 and yes, it's not the top tier or even like SI. FYI, don't touch SI. I don't care what you do. Yeah, SI just, it's a no. It's a no, unfortunately. But if you're noticing you're hitting that threshold a little bit faster than you would want to, you definitely need this next piece of the puzzle because this is the secret sauce. So the name of the game with this setup to get the four hours, depending on what you're doing, or eight hours, this is going to be airflow. Seems silly, but the CVE-1 is actually more sensitive than the ZVE-10, which I find absolutely absurd and baffling that the, the $700 camera, the younger sibling of the ZV lineup, this camera is supposed to be the Beast Knees Hall of Fame. And yeah, it is having some issues at the best of the best setting where you can put your camera in the best setting possible on the ZV-E10 and not have that issue. So the reason I say airflow is gonna be what makes this system work is because I have always had my cameras recessed into the closet just to further save on the little bit of floor space that I have in this small home office. But there's no airflow and it does get hot as hell <laughs> and it just isn't not enough airflow for this camera. You may have seen online where you need to open up the port doors and stuff like that on the ZVE-1 to get extended times and they would be correct because that is important in order to getting more airflow to the camera. And you may also be thinking, well, what about the new fan or what about getting a fan for it to place on the ZVE-1? And that is an option. And just today, I actually got the Ulanzi fan that finally came in from across the pond and it took for as long as it did back in the 90s when you would pull out a magazine insert and mail it. That's how long it took to get this gosh darn fan, but I've already been putting it under test. And so that will be coming up in a future video. But all of these tests to get up to the eight hours has been done with no fans whatsoever. The environments in my home office are based on me, how I feel, what I need. Now I roll with the heating pad on just about 90% of the time I'm in here at the highest heat setting or my back and my waist because I have stage four endometriosis. Now I need to be cool. I don't want the Whitney Houston lip sweat and I wanna be comfortable based on how comfortable it is outside or not. And so sometimes the fan is on, sometimes the air is on, sometimes it's not. So all of these tests were done multiple times in multiple different scenarios in order for me to be able to get duplicatable results. But your mileage still may vary depending on what you're in, which is why I said test and see which of these three settings would probably work for you. But I did all of these with the best success in the highest settings that I tried. That's what I, what I like. But you can drop down to like that recommended middle setting for the best use case. Sounds silly, makes a world of difference. And so even if you have that on the desk, pull the desk a little bit closer away from the wall and closer to you, and it'll work. So small changes can actually go a long way for the camera. Again, with all the port doors and everything open, which is always natural for me anyway, with my regular setups and my cameras, the doors have already been open, so this isn't anything uncommon. And that includes the battery door as well. Keep stress off the cables and it just makes it easy to access anything when you're streaming. But all I did was pull the camera about an inch and a half, or maybe two inches barely from the closet area that it's in and just a little bit forward, just so it can catch a little bit of that breeze from the air conditioner 
conditioner or just, just chill in the room. And then at that point, it worked fine. On days where the air conditioner wasn't on, it was fine as well with it pulled forward. So that worked. If you're already in an open space, maybe it's sitting on a tripod, more than likely you'll be fine already. So you don't need to do anything extra to, in order to make this work. Now, if you're still running into any overheating challenges with all of the changes that I've recommended, there's one last thing that I would recommend changing. And that's going from the 2160p, I think it is, to the 1080p output for the camera, meaning you're not outputting uh, exactly at the higher setting, but you're doing 1080p. But the funny thing is with the ZV-E1 is that the 1080p is actually down sampled from 4K, just like the Sony A7S Mark III. So the 1080p is super high quality. I've switched back and forth from 1080p to 4K over my last several videos. And I bet none of you were none the wiser if you've seen any of those videos and probably can't even spot which is which because it's that good. So if you're using a software like Ecamm Live and you can upscale that in 4K, you can actually do this. And I, I'm telling you, I've done this a lot of times. Nobody's none the wiser and everybody compliments me on how well the clips in the footage looks in the videos. And if you want to try Ecamm Live out for yourself, just use the promo code Diana2Moss, M-O-S, and that will get you two months for free with Ecamm Live. Now, some people have wondered if the cages for the Sony ZV-E1 could actually work as some kind of a heat sink uh, of sorts. And to be honest with you, the most I've seen this do is pretty much act as a bit of a placebo effect. Yes, the metal is cool. Yes, it touches the camera and it would help dissipate. And there's probably some level of science to that to a point, but it's supposed to be in a placebo effect. And it doesn't matter if the base plate was on, if the cage was on, I've not noticed any difference. And so unfortunately, in this particular use case, the cage has not been as helpful as most people would think. But if you wanna see how I'm using this for my wireless podcast setup, so I can still get long-term recording on the camera, even out of this particular uh, stand, and I can have it back there uh, on the little sofa so I can actually do my thing, but wirelessly, make sure you check out the video coming up on the screen because that is one of my favorite setups. Or you can check out some of my 10 least common known factors and favorite settings on this camera that you can use as a content creator. Thank you.